The Reeser House was designed by the architect Mies van der Rohe, and it was his first commission in the United States after a life spent living and working in Germany. The house was never built, but it was a crucial milestone in both Mies' career, his life, and the evolution of his design work. In this video, we'll explore the Reeser House, its history and its significance, and we'll model it in the computer and do a real-time walkthrough in reaction to its design. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to Architecture with Stuart. I am Stuart. Here in Chicago, the architect Mies van der Rohe, he looms very large, and this isn't just due to his physical stature. He spent the majority of his career in the city, and his buildings helped define an entire generation of the city's architecture. That generation became known as the Second Chicago School of Architecture, named after the Chicago School of Architecture with the kind of commercial buildings by, by like Louis Sullivan or Daniel Burnham. Immediately before coming to Chicago, though, Mies spent two months living on a ranch near Jackson Hole, Wyoming. There he was staying with the Reeser family, who commissioned him to build a dining room for their ranch on the Snake River. This house was designed at a pivotal moment in Mies' career, and so I decided to take a deep dive into it, to see what stories I can read in that design. What parts of it are like the buildings that Mies designed while in Europe? And how does it prefigure the strategies which would develop later here in America? So we modeled the house in the computer to study its design. You can explore that model using the link in the video description. It will take you to a tab in your browser where you can walk around it without any special software needed. And this video itself is broken up into chapters to help you navigate the different parts where we talk about the history and stuff like that. So without any further ado, let's explore the Reeser House, beginning with the timeline. The Reeser House was designed in 1937 for Stanley and Helen Reeser, for a site near Jackson Hole, Wyoming, by the architect Mies van der Rohe. Mies van der Rohe was born Maria Ludwig Michael Mies in 1886 in Aachen, Germany. Mies received his first commission while working as a draftsman for a furniture company. The real house bears few markers of Mies' later architectural strategies, but it features a tight massing with minimal overhangs. Mies then went on to apprentice at the studio of Peter Behrens from 1908 to 1912, where he would pick up the phrase, less is more. This was told to him by Behrens while he was working on the design for the AEG turbine factory. The building is considered an early example of modern building with its minimal volume and simple use of steel and glass. Mies' big transformation comes around 1921, when he decides to change his name, and he enters a design competition with a dream for a shimmering glass tower. Shortly after this, he began experimenting with open plan strategies, which are described in the link above. It's during this period that Mies designed his early influential European work, like the Barcelona Pavilion and the Tugendhat House. He also becomes the director of the Bauhaus School for three years, from 1930 to 1933. One student that emerged from this period of the school is another very influential architect in Chicago, Bertrand Goldberg, who designed Marina City and the Prentice Women's Hospital. All this career momentum for Mies was halted by the rise of the Nazi party in Germany, which vilified modern design. Mies went into hiding until moving to the United States in 1937. It's here where his first commission is the Reeser House. He is also appointed the head of architecture at IIT in Chicago, a role that he would serve for 20 years. It's also at this school where he would master plan the entire campus on the southeast side of Chicago. Not since Thomas Jefferson's University of Virginia would a single architect be responsible for an entire American university campus. The campus work and his tenure as head of the school would come to an end in the late 1950s, and shortly after Crown Hall was constructed, the building that housed the architecture school. And all of this took place around 10 years before his death in 1969. But back in 1937, and Mies was on an adventure in America when commissioned for the Reeser House at Snake River Ranch. The design built upon work that was already completed that was designed by the architect Mark Peters, but the Reesers lost confidence in him and hired Mies to change the design. Mies came to stay at the ranch for two months to work on the project before he would eventually move to Chicago. And while the building was never built for coming in too expensive, the commission was an important milestone in Mies's career and helpful in motivating him to bring him to the United States. One of the striking aspects of the Reeser House to me is the site and the conditions that exist prior to the house, which serve as strong elements for Mies to contend with. One of my preconceptions of Mies's work is that he tends to design buildings as like isolated objects, rather than having the building overtly appearing like it's closely interacting with its context. 
Of course, the Tugendhat house is a notable exception, the way it uses the hill for framing the views and creating privacy, but that building's kind of the exception rather than the rule. This here is the site for the Reeser house. It was designed to directly incorporate building elements, which had been started but not finished by the previous architect. This includes an enclosed structure to the west and 30 foot by 40 foot piers that straddle the creek. These empty piers actually still exist today, although I couldn't really find any photos of them. The building creates a large dining room over the creek and makes use of these pre-existing elements. Mies tried to understand these conditions by making a series of collages. These collages use images from posters and magazines melded with the drawings of elements that would go into the home, like some columns, furniture, and some art. In these collages, you can really see Mies wrestling with the idea of symmetry and overlapping layered series of planes. While Mies had used collage quite a bit in the past, this is also the first time that the scene framed in one of Mies' collages is a rural landscape instead of an urban setting. The Reeser house is also the only house where Mies proposed wood cladding on the exterior, a reddish black cypress. And this was a compromise from the clients who wanted the building made out of pine. The wood is on the interior and the exterior, and the wood is complemented with some stone accents. Overall, the design of the house distinguishes itself from the surroundings. The piers that it sits upon are heavy concrete elements, but the structure of the house, which extend through it and down to the piers, are Mises signature chrome cross-shaped columns, the same kind that he used in the Barcelona Pavilion and in the Tugendhat house. While there are large heavy volumes inside of the house, these are reserved for things like the fireplace and they're not for the structure. The plan of the house looks like this and the existing part from the previous architect is over here on the west and Mies added the other private spaces over here on the east of the master bedroom and the other bedrooms. The kind of entry zone here with the dining room and public spaces here more at the center. of the house lines up with a grid, started by the cross columns and then referenced throughout the structure. Even the angled walls line up with intersections of this grid. And the outer bays are small, while the inner ones are larger, and this allows for more freedom of movement inside of the open plan. And the common modular sizes are A, B, B, C, B, B, A, with the smaller ones on the outside, the Bs being the middle, and the C at the largest. And all of these create uh, squares, and doubled up on the ends, uh, and then the middle bays are squares. The 3D modeling of the Reeser House was relatively straightforward. Mies van der Rohe's archive was collected by the Museum of Modern Art in New York, and they make digitized sketches and drawings available to the public, so access to those is really easy. There were, however, a lot of evolving iterations of the house, and deciphering between them was a bit of a chore. The most complete and final version wasn't necessarily the simplest and the cleanest. It's actually quite complex, despite some of the early models making it look like it was a simple bar bridging over the water. Also, the landscape was a significant part of the design, and we simply don't have the resources to model all of that at this time. So we decided to model it like a simple topography, although this is far from the actual conditions of the building. Walking up to the Reeser house, I'm struck by just how rustic it looks. Even though it takes a relatively simple box shape, it's not as clean as some of Mies' other designs. There is a lot of wood, and this is the first time that Mies clad a building in wood, and man, he went really all in. It's not clear where to enter the building. I can tell where the garage is, so that seems like a safe bet. The door is round behind it, 
Down here there is a lot of stone, and a strategically placed round window that offers a portal view to the river, like a portal window in a boat. The entry sequence is almost entirely lined with stone. This heavy material is connected with the ground, and it sets up a real dialogue between the wooden parts and the stone parts of the building. Once up the stairs, we're presented with more stone on the back side of the fireplace. This seems like an entry foyer, and you can decide to go outside, go to the more private parts of the house, or into the most public part. In order to get to the public zone, you have to walk around the fireplace and get right up against the glass. You're almost pressed right up to the glass, where you're presented with an amazing view outside and into the mountains. That, that view into the landscape would have been phenomenal. Once you're there, you're in a narrower subdivision of the space as defined by the columns and the walls. It's interesting that the main space, it's almost completely open, but it does have an important lanes or bays and alignments between elements that define the space. I'm also really struck by the relationship between the symmetry and the asymmetry in this house. There are a lot of symmetrical relationships set up between things, like between the columns or the way the fireplace is situated. But you're always approaching these elements at the side, or parallel to them, so you don't necessarily see the symmetry right away. Or there's an object that breaks the symmetry by being placed in what seems like a random or drifting location. I was unaware of the Reeser House before this exercise, and I think it's pretty fascinating to look at what some might call the B-sides of architecture. If the Farnsworth House is the hit single, this house might be on the other side of that record. And you can learn a lot by watching how someone is working through a problem by studying these transitional works. The house seems transitional in more ways than just one. Firstly, it was Mises' first commission in America, and it carries with it some of the, his earlier experiments like the cross columns, and it throws in some new ones like the wood cladding. The house is also transitional in the sense that it mediates between a powerful landscape and pre-existing elements like the piers. The building bridges between these things and creates a literal physical connection and transition between them. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like. I'm really enjoying forensically reconstructing these unbuilt or demolished buildings. And if you like this sort of thing, check out the playlist of other lost architecture. I also find the conversation in the discussion section below super fascinating with every single video. So if you're interested, leave your thoughts down there and we can continue the conversation about the Reeser House. Finally, if you're not subscribed already, maybe consider giving that a shot and we'll fill your subscription feed with weekly architectural focused content. See you then.